Now, today in the morning, the debt president William Samuel Ruto was able to mobilize around 100 members of parliament for a parliamentary group meeting at his official residence in Karen. Now, in that meeting, these leaders were able to discuss about political formation uh, of UDA party, a vehicle that William Samuel Ruto is preparing to use in the upcoming 2022 general election. They were also able to discuss about the scheduling of public engagement with common Mwanainchi. Remember, William Samuel Ruto has been having a lot of rallies during weekend. That is Saturday and Sunday. And even in the middle of the week, he would at least meet Kenyans. So they had to settle this because of the new rules from the health department after the surging numbers in COVID-19. Again, the DP told us they were able also to discuss about political economic. And that is where the bottom-up model of economy comes in. And remember, this issue brought a lot of controversy when Esther Wahome failed to explain to Kenyans about that model of economy. So DP took a lot of time to explain to Kenyans about this issue and that was their main agenda also in that meeting. And even I remember the journalists used their time to ask him questions about how he's going to Im implement that bottom-up economics. So on this punchline, we are going to discuss about that meeting that the DP had with the 100 members of parliament, what it means in 2020 general election, and to the current economic situation that we are facing. But before we go deep into that discussion, you might be watching me and you have not yet subscribed. My humble request is please consider to subscribe so that you help us to grow this platform. And to all the returning subscribers, I must say thank you so much for coming back again. Now, one thing that I can give credit to William Samuel Ruto is his ability to mobilize these 100 members of parliament, remember elected ones, for a PG at his home. Remember, it is all about spending, and therefore the DP is determined to spend so that he can maintain to have these leaders on his side. And if he is able to have these 100 members of parliament, when really he don't have that much serious, substantive, political party that these guys are joining. Remember, UDA is not that strong party, and it's just something that they revamped. So, managing to convince these leaders to join him is not a joke. So, credit to him. But again, one thing that you should remember is that almost 50% of elected members of parliament normally don't make back to the parliament. So, in as much as 100, maybe a half or more than a half of that group might not see the parliament again. So he will look for another way to at least fill that gap. Though the good thing is that at least these leaders have some network since they are serving as leaders of uh, currently. So they have their network, they have their following, followers, the people who believe in them. So at least they are coming with some numbers to him. So that one already is a good place to start for the DP. Now the DP talked about the discussion they had on political formation. It tells you that now the deputy president is preparing the ground to get out of Jubilee government. So it means soon, when they have initiated this kind of discussion, it means there's high possibility that William Samoy Ruto definitely might be resigning from President Uhuru Kenyatta's government. And if you remember the discussion that he had on uh, in Oro TV, it tells you that William Samoy Ruto is a bitter man and at the same time he is setting ground to resign for President Uhuru Kenyatta's government. And therefore, this is just a path that is setting to prepare these members of parliament and other groups of people to decamp officially from Jubilee Party to UDA Party. So this is one of the preparations that William Samoy Ruto is laying on ground ahead of decamping from Jubilee government. Now, in as much the Minister of Health gave new rules eh, to curb this COVID thing, what I believe is that William Samuel Ruto is not going to sleep or relax as time goes by. As times goes by. When he talk about a settling of his public engagement, the way he had put on his social media platform, 
It means when these leaders have discussed here about this issue, what they are going to do is just to, to change the strategy on how they are going to engage Wanainchi. For example, having those Zoom meetings, then again change to social hall meetings rather than having these public rallies. Because remember, mainly he has been having these public rallies when he gets to some places. So we are going to see more of social hall meetings rather than these public rallies. So when he talk about this scheduling, definitely that is one of the issues that we are going to force to face going forward in his UDA part. Again, largely the conversation has been about the bottom up approach to the economy. So the DP give more of time on that discussion. And he has explained and we see more this journalist were still repeating was still asking him this question repeatedly to explain to Kenyans how he's going to manage finance that economic model to make sure that Kenyans are not going through the kind of problem that they're having now with the current economic situation when we will have the next government. So time will tell. And again, before I explain deeper on that bottom-up issue, one first thing is that Moses Kuria, the Gatundu South Member Parliament, was not part of this parliamentary group meeting. And the journalist also asked that question. Remember, uh, Kuria went ahead to form his new party by the name Chama Chakazi. So Kuria is not part of this issue, and that is a question that in the future we will check deeper into that reason why Moses Kuria was not part of this thing. Because remember, William Samai Ruto is focusing on having more of his support in central region. That is his bedroom as of now. So Kuria is also coming up with Chama Chakazi which is intending to take more seats from central region. So it tells you that there is a question mark there. Now with the issue of bottom up, William Ruto has started a conversation because he, did, he was trying to run away from the ethnic politics, whereby Kenyans will still ask a question here that we have had a Kalenjin Kikuyu, Kalenjin Kikuyu presidency, and therefore it was just good to have at least a new president from another community. So, by running away from that issue, he always come up with this bottom-up economics, saying that he's going to pull the intention of Kenyans to other direction. Though the biggest problem is explaining on how he's going to be able to fund this bottom-up issue. Because remember, when you talk about bottom-up economics, President Uru Kenyatta government produced, uh, was able to give a lot of funds to youth there, in the actual Kwanaisha Wanaita um, Youth Fund, we had women funds and we had Kazim Tan. All this issue is where William Samaruto is talking about bottom up. So it means even in the President Uru Kenyatta's government, there have been those programs to make sure that Wanainchi are at least having uh, are at least being exposed some exposed to some funds so that they can have their project running down there. So again, William Samai Ruto is talking largely about the Mamamboga and the Boda Boda. What is not explained to us deeply is about the issue to do with people like, you know, we have different sectors. We have people who are in welding, we have people who are in carpentry and joinery. We have people who are in these all small scale enterprises. We have people who are doing small, uh, small scale farming. People who are doing beef farming. People who are in... Uh, um, coffee farming, people who are in uh, tea farming, people who are doing sugarcane farming, all those, sm all those small scale farming. He needs to approach this issue and explain to Kenyans on how he's going to solve this problem. Because the biggest problem that Kenyans have had is the issue to do with the taxes. The biggest problem that is choking business in Kenya is the overtaxing that is happening currently. So, I think what William Samuel Ruto was supposed to explain to Kenyans is how he's going to manage the issue of taxes. Because remember, it, in as much as President Uru Kenyatta government was able to give youth fund, that money has not been able to sustain the youth outside there because in as much as they try to engage in business, the taxes is always waiting them there. And that is what has been killing those people. The women fund. The Kazim Tani, you know, all those small things, the jobs that have been happening there. The biggest issue is overtaxing. 
Like when you talk about this farming, you come here, you find that the government is overtaxing the, the fertilizer. And even another problem that we have had in Kenya mainly is when these people bring in these fake fertilizers. And remember, when they bring in this fake fertilizer, definitely they want to kill them, Kulima down there, such like that they will bring in their own product which they will be selling to the government. So that is part of the problem that Kenyans have been facing. Cost of high electricity has been killing a lot of businesses, like manufacturing industry, even when youth come together, contribute their money, they open small enterprises like manufacturing and processing. Definitely the issue to do with power is what is killing these people. That's why even most of investors definitely will prefer to run away from Kenya like work maybe in Uganda or Tanzania, then they sell the product back here. So if we could explain on how we can solve this issue, cost of manufacturing, even to do with the, you know, also even transportation, when you talk about fuel, when you increase the price of fuel, definitely transportation cost comes in, and that also explains why the livelihood is going to go hard. So once the issue of tax is dealt with, then that is when the economy is going to thrive. So even if someone will give you so much money with small interest to return that money, and then you are highly taxed, definitely the DP to him is saying he is, is, going, to, uh, is going to bring in new taxpayers, creating new taxpayers. So, and again, this is what Musalem David was talking about, creating new taxpayers by reducing this cost of uh, manufacturing, reducing taxes, and uh, reducing government expenditure. But for him, giving more money is creating new tax payers. So, in as much as borrowing this idea from Salem Davadi, what he's not explaining is how these new tax payers will be sustained. Because, because of this high cost, it is going to be very hard to sustain this. And I'm going to give you my own example, not someone else. You are going to find that even Building a house for a youth is just a problem in the current situation that we have. For example, me, myself, I was doing a four-bedroom house. And remember, before you start this construction, <laughs> one thing you have to look for someone who is going to do the drawing for you. That person needs to be paid. And remember, it's being taxed. Because it's being taxed, it will transfer that tax to you. So I had to plead with this guy, instead of taking that high money, he was able to charge me at least 15000 Now, once you have that, then you will have to move ahead and get the stamps from the county government. Before this guy will stamp that paper for you to go and start that construction, you are going to pay almost 17000 And remember, I was doing this construction in my village. So, the county government tax you 17000 Now, Jahanza, anything to do with the construction. Then it comes to the material. You have to buy the material. The ballast, the cement, the sand that you need to use, all these things are being taxed at the end of the day. So you find that even youth, when they want to do small construction at home there, it becomes so much hard even to make a structure or a shed. And what want to tax even the toilet. So you find when I was doing this construction, actually I ended up reaching just to the lindo. I reached to the lindo and I had to stop this business until I look for more money so that I can continue with that project. So even you find reaching the place I have reached and when I look back on what I have spent, you find that the tax is eating more into this material. Because the same youth who is doing construction in Uganda or Tanzania might use at least a half of the resources that one is using. Uh, sorry, half of money that one is using when it's doing the same structure in Kenya. So now my current project is on Lindo, but now you see my contractor tells me that I need about 100 pieces of iron sheet. That is uh, 75 meters, like sorry, uh, 3 meters, like 75 pieces, then 2.5 meters, like 25 pieces, and one piece is going for almost 1,300. So that tells you that I will need to have a whooping 120,000, so the 100, yeah, 120,000 for me to get that money for the roofing. So before I, and now I have not dealt with even grills and other things. 
So it tells you even doing construction and other project ndio maana hata siku hizi watu wanaoana lakini hata kulipa mahari is a problem because even when you get to the market even getting those cows or kettles to go and pay dowry they are they are now selling the same price they were selling a a grown up cow that is the price they are now selling a cattle sorry a, a calf so mambo imebadilika and that is the kind of economy we are having here so you find even Doing a construction is a problem for you. That's why they will, we will keep on paying rent rather than affording house. And remember, these guys had an agenda to do with the affordable housing. And also, the debt president should know that we still remember and Kenyans are still fresh with the six months, with, with this issue to do with the in six months' time, this stadium will be finished. In six months' time, this project will be finished. So, Kenyans are used to his pledges which are always not being fulfilled at the end of the day so you should look for a way to make sure that this thing is going to work out and that is possible when these people can reduce the taxes because taxes is what is killing many youth outside here now i have so much to say about this but i'm going to end my video here but please remember to subscribe comment and share out may good god bless you and see you in our next video.